Okay, um, so this is part two of the two-stage ammonia systems. Um, and I apologize for abruptly ending the last one. I um, got to a point where I realized I had some mistakes on the slides that um, uh, kind of permeated through the whole analysis. So I had to take a break and fix that. Um, got a chance then to turn off the dryer that was banging around in the background in the, 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 the previous um, video. So uh, now it's nice and late at night and very quiet here, and uh, we should be able to finish this off fairly quickly. So what I want to do is, is uh, two things in this video. One is to walk through uh, evaluating the thermodynamic states of these 10 states we, we've identified in the system, um, and, then, and then just kind of show the results of a little sensitivity study I did on discharge pressure. Uh, so with that, let's get going. So um, here's the table, um, and uh, we see the eight states and these two prime states, two prime and four prime. And so these are um, outlets pressure or outlet states of the, uh, the two compressors, um, but I'm relaxing the isentropic condition, and I'll get specifically show how I'm doing that. Um, hopefully you can see on here I've got a little bit of um, shading on these three. This is what we know. We assume we know the suction pressures of the two stages, which which is the inner chart, um, intercooler pressure, the actual low end suction pressure, and then the discharge pressure of the second stage. Uh, these are usually set by the controllers, by the, the operators of the system. Um, suction pressure is pretty much determined by how hard the uh, the booster stage of the first stage pumps, how much vapor it's moving through. Uh, the intercooler pressure is pretty much set by how hard the second stage pumps. Uh, and the discharge pressure is determined for the most part by the condensers. The more water and the more air they're moving through the condenser, the, the, the closer they can get the condenser to, uh, to the wet bulb temperature in the ambient conditions. So, um, so in these things I have um, the pressure and the quality. We know they're saturated, they're out there in the saturation region or at the edges of the saturation region. So you have two independent uh, variables and you could fill this out. So going into the tables or using the online calculator, you can find the temperature, uh, you can find the H, you can find the S uh, for those three states. So, so uh, the first step is to fill up through, fill those three lines. Um, next step is to see what else we know. Okay, so we know um, two and two prime are at the intercooler pressure. That's the discharge of the um, um, the first the booster stage, and state three is also uh, at intercooler pressure. So we can we can we can fill those all, all out. We know that four four prime and five and seven are all at the discharge pressure. So they're all in that. Remember, I was talking about the lines of constant pressure on the TS diagram, and then finally we know that six is. Um, is that intercooler pressure. So this is that small mass stream that got expanded out through the valve into the intercooler. And then eight goes back down to suction pressure. So we know all those pressures. Um, we also know that state two is the result of isentropic compression of the booster stage. So we know that this entropy is the same as that entropy. And we know this entropy, uh, four, is the same as the entropy at three. So um, for states two and four, we now have two independent properties and we can fill those out. So these should be all shaded in. Uh, and the next step is um, let's look at two prime and four prime. And to do that, we look at the definition of isentropic efficiency. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty handy property. It's, it's very much related to a real efficiency of the system, but, but it, it just helps us do this analysis a little, e a little easier. So imagine a compressor uh, with inlet and outlet uh, states and um, and imagine uh, uh, the outlet state being defined by isentropic compression. And so that's this, uh, this numerator here. H outlet is the isentropic state at the outlet. Here's the inlet state. And then, and then H prime is the realistic one. It's the one, it's the, it's the, um, the actual um, state after, um, after compression. And so we'll define isentropic efficiency as the ratio of that delta enthalpy, that energy unit per unit energy under ideal conditions divided by the real one, which would be a bigger number. So isentropic efficiency would be less than one. Um, using the actual states we just talked about, inlet for the booster is one, the outlet is two. That means we can find H2 prime as a function of this H2 we got from the isentropic compression. Um, 
minus H1 divided by the isotropic efficiency, added that back to H1. Same thing with H with the second stage, the inlet's H3. H4 is the um, isotropic state, the state of we, we determined from isotropic compression, uh, and H4 prime is now the, um, uh, the, the value we were looking for. Um, these will be in the superheat region, they will be higher temperatures and higher enthalpies. So now uh, with, with that, four prime and three and two prime have two independent states, enthalpy and pressure, and you can go into the tables and find those out. So now we have enough information to fill out all these states from one through five. We can fill that part of the table out. And, and for the end of it, we just notice uh, some things about enthalpy. Uh, H6 is going to be the same enthalpy as H5 because it just goes through an expansion process. Uh, and now state 6 is determined. Two independent properties, we can fill that out. 7 is comes from the energy balance of the um, intercooler. So at the end of the last video, I just touched on how we'd set that up. Um, and this is the result. Um, it, it's, we talk about it in the, in the write-up that parallels this. Uh, but it's fairly straightforward. Apply the second law of thermodynamics, or the first, I'm sorry, the first law of thermodynamics to the intercooler, and you will get that. Um, the, 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 the subtlety here, and I'm just going to present this as a given, um, just because I haven't, um, uh, it, I just don't want to take the time. The, the, the ratio of the mass flow rate, the amount of, the portion of the mass flow that goes through that valve at six is equal to the quality of the gas coming out at six, or the quality of the mixture coming out at six. So that's where X six. That's why X six is showing up. Uh, the the quality of the mixture at six is showing up in here. We we do know it because we just determined state six uh, in the previous line. So we find X six. This is one of the few qualities we need to know to to, to get this thing done. Um, find H seven and then H eight again is the result of isenthalpic expansion. So we know H eight. So I, I just did this graph as a guide. It might be helpful. It might not. I don't know. Um, but, we're, but you know, kind of walk it through and think it through yourself. I c color coded it in terms of the, the, the progression as you go through the solution. So you start with the gray shaded areas, the, the three states we know, the inlet of the, um, the booster, the inlet of the um, second stage, and the outlet of the condenser. Right, states one, states three, and state five. We know two independent things, so we we can find those out. Then we progress to the light blue, assuming isentropic compression, because um, we know the pressures they're going to, and then we know the entropy, so we can find those superheated states. Um, and then from there, apply isentropic efficiency to find two prime and four prime, and fill those out. Um, and there's the equations that I that I showed in the previous a couple slides ago and also shown my write up. So from there we go to the light red which is um, showing um, uh, uh, state 6 which is again just an isenthalpic expansion. Uh, the medium red is using that energy balance to find that entropy in the intercooler, or the sub the subcooled entropy that comes out of the intercooler, and then to find the dark red is then the expansion, and and you'll probably want to find the the quality at eight as well. So the only two qualities you need are six and eight, um, and uh, and that's it. So that's the that's the order in which you go through these this analysis. Uh, so the last thing is looking at the specific energy on a per unit, um, uh, on the per unit mass basis. Um, and, and keep in mind that this gets a little tricky because not all lines on the TS diagram um, are seeing the same mass flow rate. So I, I, I and again, I ask, I ask you to read the write-up um, that accompanies this, but uh, I assume that M, I define M dot as the mass flow rate going through the condenser, the high stage compressor and the condenser. Um, and it's X6 times m dot is the small mass flow rate cut across into the intercooler, which means that 1 minus x6 times m dot is the mass flow rate going through the evaporator. So it's a little, a little, little there's some subtleties you need to take into account. That's why these are a little more complicated than they were in the, in the previous example with just a single stage. So the Q sub L is the refrigeration capacity per unit mass, and it's 1 minus x6. Uh, H1 minus H8, and this is per unit mass going through the condenser. Okay, that's that's how I've defined this problem. The work of the compressor is um, 
this uh, sum here, so the, there's less mass flow going through the lower stage than there is going through the high stage. And then the, the coefficient of performance is, again, a little messier, but it's not too bad. Just once you know the H's, you can just work it right through. Okay, so in um, the write-up, I actually go through uh, a real example with some real numbers and fill out the table and come up with some values. And this, this was inspired by a visit that we made when we were up in Kodiak last month. Um, and, and also inspired by this was a, a little sensitivity study I did to, um, to see what the coefficient of performance of the compressor work would look like under various discharge pressures. So, um, so I, I wanted to compute COP. I also computed another index, which is related to COP, and it's related to EER. Remember, we saw EER previously. Um, in industrial refrigeration systems, the index for this they usually use is horsepower, is, is compressor work, compressor power in horsepower per ton of, con, of refrigeration capacity, so HP per ton. Um, but it's all the same thing. It's just different units. Okay, so I'm going to pop out of... Um, PowerPoint and go over to my spreadsheet that I've set up to do this. So when we got there, we noted that the discharge pressure was 145 PSI gauge, which is 160 um, PSI absolute. Uh, and so here's my table. Here's with my eight uh, states and the two primed states, two prime and four prime. Here's my, um, a little, I put a little description in here, first stage suction, that's what FSS, first stage discharge. Then I just said this is the the, the discharge state with efficiencies, um, second stage suction, second stage discharge, condenser output, flash to the intercooler, intercooler exit, low pressure receiver. Um, I, in computing this, I assumed an isentropic of efficiency of 90% for both of the um, the, the uh, compressors. Uh, it's probably lower than that. I just a guess. Um, that's pretty high. Compressors have lots of things that cause them to be uh, inefficient to various levels. So uh, I think this is being generous, which is fine. Um, and all of these things, these are the specific energies. So that's the refrigeration capacity um, per unit mass. Uh, so these are all lo all lowercase. But the, but the, the real thing here is coefficient of performance, 2.6. Uh, which is actually pretty low when you think about it, but it's a huge lift. They're going from minus 35 Fahrenheit to um, well, what's the what's the discharge temperature? Um, it's over here. Yeah, to um, 82. Okay, that's the that's the saturation temperature at that discharge pressure. So it's going from minus 35 to 82. Really large lift. So a low coefficient performance you know, shouldn't be too surprising. Um, and so, um, let me just go down here. Yeah, so I also then did for 100 tons of capacity using these specific ones said that the compressor work would be 182 horsepower. So that's 1.82 horsepower per ton of capacity. So that's the other index of performance. And I just copied this um, table over to these two other sheets in the spreadsheet. So here it is at 140. Now, my plug-in that um, I used in a previous example for the for Excel doesn't have ammonia properties. So I had to do this using the online calculator and filling it in. But but what you'll see is that some of these values I filled in and some of them I um, brought over from the other cells. So for example, H7, um, I've implemented that formula that we did to find the enthalpy at state 7. Um, same thing with the isenthalpic um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the uh, enthalpies for the isent isentropic efficiency. I use those formulas. I set up those formulas. Uh, same thing here. All of these specific energies are based on the formula from this table. So I just kept repeating the analysis for 120 PSI discharge pressure, 110, all the way down to 105, which is really low, right? That's about 90 PSI gauge. Um, and then uh, just copied the you know, made a little table from the, the specific results. So discharge pressure in this column, there's the condenser um, um, temperature corresponding with that. Here's the coefficient of performance. Here's the HP per 100 tons of refrigeration. And then this is the reduction of uh, how, how much CO2 increases or reduction in this, in this power requirement um, as we reduce pressure. I graphed that up and found I was actually kind of surprised. It is dead linear. Okay, in other words, as you lower 
the discharge pressure, the horsepower per 100 tons of capacity drops linearly. So we, the day we were there, it was running 160 PSI. If you can drop it to 120 PSI, you reduce the energy by 16%. Um, this table here that's highlighted um, keys on weather data and specifically wet bulb temperature because that's what determines the condenser pressure. So this is some analysis over the course of a year of what the condensers are likely to see and that sets the discharge pressure if it's running the way it should. Um, I'll come back to that. That's it. We're getting a little ahead of the game. That's something I'll do in a couple weeks before, just before we wrap up um, the refrigeration side of this course. Uh, but the point here is that um, once you have these, this analysis down and, you, and you've got the, 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 the setup ready to go, you can do the sensitivity study and get a, a nice graph like that, which is a very, um, very good solid result. So, um, so with that, I'm going to wrap this up. The homework assignment for this is similar to what you just saw here, but instead of different um, discharge pressures, I want you to use different intercooler pressures and, and find out what the, what, what the various effects of different discharge pressures are for this system. So that's it. Um, very good.